Well hello people and welcome back to part 6 of Eggenborough, our City Skylines 2 series. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Really enjoyed putting this town centre together today and in today's episode rather than expand they actually want to revisit uh, the couplet system in the heart of town. As this thing is starting to choke on occasion and I'd also like to test out just how flexible all these City Skylines 2 road tools really are. And I also want to rebuild our starting trumpet interchange today into what essentially will become a single point urban interchange but will also allow for kind of four-way directionality as we look to head to the left side of the highway here. It's a fun episode, lots of road fun. Let's get started shall we? So today's road, I guess Elizabeth Street and Poplar Street, uh, are starting to choke on occasion mainly during the heavy rush hours. It's not horrendous, it does clear and it maybe gets a little bit gridlocked, but this is only going to get worse the older the city gets and the busier it becomes, basically. So I want to really today just explore how deep and fascinating these new road tools uh, can really be. Uh, because I want to try and work for the first time in the city with, I guess, what I'm going to refer to as super nodes going forward. So I want to line up uh, a little bit of road here. Let's go for pretty much there. I think that, that should be okay. We'll draw that in, and then I want to place a large roundabout in here, alright? It's going to look like that, it's not going to look too bad. So this is going to warp and change as we build around it today, but eventually we want it to be there so we can delete it. It's a bit of a weird process, but follow along and you'll sort of get the grip of it. So I want to grab some three-lane highway, and this is going to come up to straight across the roundabout, actually, and into uh, the existing couplet system over here, alright? You can see the roundabout has gone, so I'm going to add it back in. Maybe even add the larger one, just so you got a bit more wiggle room around it. We'll come back into my highways again, and it's important we use highways here because the highway lanes can be configured uh, much easier than regular street lanes can be. Uh, so I'm going to grab my three-lane road again, and this time I'm going to bring it all the way uh, back through here, which again looks a little weird at first of all, but we're going to add the roundabout back into it again. All right. Then we're going to grab our two lane road, and as this one can be three lane asymmetric, so we'll draw this uh, into the roundabout there. That's going to be wonderful. Uh, we're going to lose a couple of houses off of this one because I want a slip lane that again is going to just take pressure off of this central junction. So let's add a little slip road here. I'm obsessed with slip lanes in Cities 2. Don't know why, <laughs> but uh, love building them. So we'll have that one cut across there, okay. And then with this road here, I want this to become a five lane asymmetric road. And I'm going to turn off all snap in here so we can align this the way we want it to be. Which is probably about there, I imagine. Okay. So that gives us our configuration there. I'd also like another slip lane that's going to come off from, say, here. And we'll meander this up into this junction over this way. I'd also like this to be two lane as well. Although not for that long of a segment, so let's draw in another road. There we go. So now they have multiple options of turning there. And then with this final segment coming into the roundabout, I'd love this to be four lane as well, but we'll have a little look at this in a second. So the magic of super nodes is now we have everything plugged into one giant roundabout. When we delete the roundabout, it ends up as this singular fuse node which is really cool especially when we come back into those four lanes and now begin to essentially add them into the configuration okay so we'll have that one go there and um, i'd also like this one to go that way as well now with this lane here we don't need the right hand turn into this direction so i'm actually going to remove that which will leave these three lanes here heading as the priority straight through Whilst also giving a left turn across the major junction into this one over here. Uh, we could also do the same process here as well if we wanted to. Uh, but again, there's just not a large amount of car traffic coming into this one. So I think it should be okay. So we've replaced the very basic um, couplet junction, which was essentially this beforehand, into now what is essentially kind of one giant node. And uh, that should hopefully flow uh, quite nicely, we think. Uh, I think, again, I'd also like to remove uh, the right turn from this one because they can slip off this way if they want to turn right. So it saves them adding more pressure to this junction over here as well. You can also re uh, repeat these slip lane ideas as well across the whole um, 
I guess, diamond junction as well if you wanted to. But uh, it's not really necessary for this point, I don't think. Uh, I'd also like to grab another little road up here as well that hooks next to our uh, high school. And I think these lanes here uh, can become some highway roads and we'll have this come down into that section there, I think. And also here as well. Don't really want people walking around this junction. I think possibly it's worth exploring some kind of pedestrian crossing uh, for which we'll implement... Could do a cable stayed bridge, actually. And I think what we will do, because we have some car parking here, um, I think we're going to introduce just a bit more larger parking. We'll also take some more commercial zoning off of the high street here. Just get rid of that. Uh, we will use a alleyway. That's been a strip. Now, I'd love to actually to have the alleyway from behind these buildings and go about there so we can add a bit more commercial at the back. Maybe kind of a bit of a seedy pawn shop or something. And I don't mean pawn as in people's kind of old used goods. Kind of that, that kind of like CD pawn down the back alley. It might be quite appropriate. And then with this road, we'll bring this straight behind the existing buildings. Also remove any zoning that might be lingering around. Uh, and then we did have some parking, didn't we? Which was pretty full. So I reckon we can justify um, a large parking lot at this point. So let's have this right up against existing commercial. Something like that, hopefully. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And again, if we've got a bit more demand, we might zone it up here, but we'll probably save this for uh, that pedestrian bridge, for which we will explore the idea of using the cable stayed one. Uh, let's bring our elevations down. We'll come up by, I think it's six meters, is it, that crosses a road? It is indeed. So let's hug uh, our grid. We'll bring this across into the middle where we can. There we go, are we happy with that? I think we are, aren't we? And we'll then grab our curb tool and we already have pedestrian pathway here. So it looks like we can just mimic this. Come in back down. Have that one there and then it also makes sense for this one to come back through here now too. Let's also not forget we did delete a couple of bus stops here as well. Uh, so let's have Couple of bus shelters either side. It looks like it's this line that runs to Whiskey Port, isn't it? So we'll grab this into here as well. And that should reinstate everything we had before. And then this can just uh, pop back down to earth on a slant like that. So we can also discourage any further crossings as well. Just by removing any pedestrian crossings across the main junction. Uh, I guess it probably makes sense for us as well to bring uh, this pathway down here as well. We will stick to the sides of a building here. And then we'll hold that back into that road there. So hopefully this shows off now what is possible with City Skyline's road tools, right? There's a tremendous amount of flexibility with them now, kind of creating these super nodes with the roundabouts and then deleting the roundabout, which leaves it all fused together. Uh, the dedicated turning lanes now for coming off left. Uh, should hopefully just see this um, intersection flow a lot smoother than the configuration it was in before. And this is something we can apply again further down here into another super node uh, should we need the traffic flow. But for right now, this one is flowing. So I think we'll leave it as that. Um, however, I would like to explore the possibility of using super nodes uh, along the BRT system so that it maintains its hierarchy and doesn't have this awkward split. Uh, we'll have a look at that a little bit later on in today's episode. Uh, but otherwise, I'd like to turn my attention toward rebuilding and extending the starting trumpet interchange here to allow for the road hierarchy to flow underneath and out the other side and eventually over the hill and far away. So, let's rebuild our starting interchange, shall we? So currently, the map comes with a trumpet, which isn't a horrendous interchange by any means. It's probably my go-to sort of solution for a three-directional interchange. Uh, but I want this to be all directional and kind of have on and off ramps coming into uh, different bits of the city here. And I imagine the most popular solution here actually is probably going to be a, a little variation of the single point urban interchange. So we'll explore how this develops. So let's first of all work with our terrain heights because we are on a bit of slopage coming off of the, um, the bridge here. So let's set ourselves up to go 
to about there. Gonna bring this roughly up to about that way there, and then push this back a little bit. And then we'll also change that height elevation there. Cool, and then our bottom roads are gonna come through all on this layer. And I imagine you're gonna sweep around this side probably. Anything over there where we can then soften all this back into the terrain masses. Just so it looks a little more natural, at least for right now. And it looks like there's possible opportunity as well for a little road to run alongside and underneath the highway here, perhaps. See how these bridges, they're not fully on the ground, so if there's a little local road connection we can explore into the downtown there, then we definitely will. But otherwise, that's not too bad at all. So let's bring down those highway roads. They're all three lane at the minute, aren't we? And I guess this is two meters, is it? It is indeed. Now that gives me the positioning for some road guidelines, which will be tremendously helpful for placing the bottom road. Uh, for which is, for the majority of the time, I think going to take the form of a six lane divided road. And I want this to be pretty much in line with these two networks over here. Bang on there. I'll feed this straight through. And then it can curve no road guideline here just in that general space that we terraformed out cool uh, now this can come down a little bit further and again just because of how beautiful and flexible all these new roads are uh, they all should just peel into this quite nicely so let's upgrade this into three lane we'll have it with our snappings on cool and then it should just be a simple case of grabbing uh, a straight bit of highway road and feeding it into its relevant side of the road at a distance of 96 meters which we'll try to maintain go for 98 on that side cool so that fuses it into a six lane road nicely uh, i'd also like this to be grass lined in the middle as well it's going to help decorate the interchange as, as itself i think shouldn't be too bad prepare some of the weird landscape that's developed around here Cool, so this elevation that carries the highways can continue almost up until the road and then we'll soften out that final section, I think. And back onto those highway roads, turn back on the parallel function and we'll bring it always at 180 degree snap. So now let's focus on crossing our highway roads over the arterial beneath it. And I imagine it's gonna look something a little bit like this. Uh, we're gonna want to elevate up. I'm gonna come off no snap in here as well. To get a bit more finesse with the placement. That should be alright, I think. So we'll come back into existing geometry on the 90 degrees. And what we fall in there by a. And there's hardly any gradient fall there, is there? So we bring those down like that. It's actually going to give us some fairly nice retaining wall spices there, isn't it? I think. And then we'll just reconfigure these into the current adjustment as the highway arrives towards the interchange. No parallel function. So that now maintains the highway itself, which is the most important thing. Uh, now let's soften out the embankments around uh, the land itself. So we have something that looks a little bit like that. Now I'll grab our two lane highway here. And I guess no guideline here is going to be helpful. Probably zoning style that snap into. I want to bring this down. Let's go to out there. 200 meter stretch of two lane road coming off the highway. And then I'm going to push a little bit of this uh, land back here now too. And then again, I think some simple slip systems here. So we'll come into this right lane. And let's just bring that down a little bit further, shall we? Let's go for out there. Should be good, I reckon. Uh, so we'll bring this lane here into that one there. That can join into the city. And then this other lane can come off at the same point, but veer off about that way i think i imagine a similar node is gonna come up through this way but again what we will do is actually do this in reverse let's go about two lane highway we'll bring this off of the highway itself down to about there seems pretty sensible and then from that same node i will just come into that one coming off this way bring that into that one there don't forget to change our directions, of course. And actually, I'm pretty happy. What we can do on the main highway here is actually upgrade to four lane and allow for 
um, a little bit of a, a merge coming off, although that's not the smoothest thing there, is it? Let's redraw that into the merge lane. That should hopefully make it a little smoother. There we go. So they have time to merge in before it goes back down to three lane as they go off that way. So we can have that there if we want. So that left turn there is not something I want to happen at all. So let's make sure we remove that. I'll notice that the, the actual sort of lane itself goes away as well. And I also want to take the right turn off of this junction as well, because if they're coming this way and want to get on the highway, then they need to take Hamilton Highway. Uh, and then a pretty similar process uh, down the other side, to be honest. We could do some sort of curvy ramps here to take advantage of the terrain, but uh, it might be a little bit over-engineered. So in the spirit of lane maths, we could also bring down these middle roads that are coming over into two lane if we wanted to. But I don't mind actually maintaining three lanes here. I think we'll probably leave it as that. And uh, now we're seeing in here actually, I think I probably want to actually choose to embank these roads that we've got over here, I think. So we'll just amend the terrain to do that for us. And then we also had the idea as well, didn't we, for uh, this tiny little road to sneak off somewhere here and just serve as a little kind of back road local connection into the city. So I think we'll do that from here. Let's bring out a little curve tool and then we'll have this meander. Uh, probably no snapping here is the most appropriate while we're working in. Relatively tight, finicky spaces. Hopefully this is going to fit. Yes it is, wonderful news. Set a curve line with the guideline. Fantastic. That should give us give a little supplementary back road support into there. Oh goodness gracious me, we've got a car crash over What's happened here? Wowzers trousers, biggest crash ever. Post van is on its side. A bus has like T-boned into the middle, like jackknifed. Two bikes, a bus, or someone's house as well. Wow, I wish we would have seen that happen says the inner masochist <laughs> wanted to witness horrendous car crashes yeah that is a big one isn't it that's the biggest one we've had i think uh, anyway speaking of let's have a look what our patrons are up to uh, joshua t has changed to a new job at his 26 less than nine He's working over here now uh, steve goodwin is moving into daffodil street where's he living in the edge of town center someone is doing well perhaps that's moving up in the world Ross Hicks is living at Elizabeth Street. Ross is doing very well for himself as well. Oh, Richard Francis has had a baby called Edna. <laughs> Not the most conventional 21st century name, but congratulations anyway, Rich. I'm sure you and Ida will be very happy raising Edna together. Casino has moved in with Rika, actually getting married as well. Congratulations, Casino. I'm really happy we mate. Chris Ortman, hopefully Chris is in. Better spirits this time. He was very poorly last time, wasn't he? But, uh, oh, he's, he's thinking he's caught something bad. Again, <laughs> Chris is always ill. Dominic is now working at Chemtrail Chemicals over in the inner city as well, which is very nice for him, isn't it? Noman's working over at LF Clothing, working in the industrial port there. Sarah Ducky is just up to nothing, essentially. She's pretty happy just being herself. Jeeba's met her special someone. Well done, Jeeba. Really happy for you, lovely. Spartan Angel has moved into 63 Bedford Street. He's living by the potato trees in the cemetery. And Jeff Avesta has moved up to 205 Middle Street as well, and is all wealthy. So the patrons are doing pretty well for themselves, it has to be said, isn't it? But so we've still got a lot to follow here, so we'll leave it another episode or two before we add more patrons in, because I don't want this list to get enormous, otherwise we will be here forever. <laughs> Every time we come to uh, check in with the patrons. Uh, but that's our configured interchange now. I think I'm really happy with this. Again, it's just a... I think it's pretty much a, a single um, point urban interchange, isn't it? It does a, a pretty tasty job. I think it even might tree line some of these roads as well. Let's get those trees growing in the middle, I think. Maybe either side of the bridge. 
yeah, I think that'll be okay. Nice, but this now gives us much more capacity to expand out this side of the highway. Because uh, I want to do some industry that isn't just import whiskey, because everything's having to go over here at the minute. So uh, maybe get some office parks set up out here and whatnot. Yeah, we'll see what develops, I think. Then I think after the interchange itself, I think we're going to downgrade into... I just don't think this particular stretch of road really needs to be six lane. It's a little bit overkill. We'll just have the extra lane come into play as we arrive at the interchange itself. Just so people have more turning options and whatnot. You'll also notice as well that I've removed the left turn from this one because if they want to turn onto that way, then they need to take this route that those guys just took. So I think those little turning options in the traffic management things can come in quite useful there for managing bits of traffic like that, I think. We hope anyway. Uh, same situation with this one too. We probably don't need the right turn to be functional there. We can turn that one off as well. Uh, splendid. Interchange is rebuilt. Uh, now I'd love to see what can happen with using some more of these uh, sort of super nodes uh, along the BRT system to solve some problems that we're having with it. So let's see what we can do with this, shall we? So we were all very much on board with the BRT system that we implemented a couple of episodes ago. But one of my biggest annoyances about it was that these splits in the system where we have to accommodate for well the traffic infrastructure it doesn't maintain the flow of the brt it breaks the paint right which is really annoying but i think we can get past this again by using a similar process to what we just did a little bit further down um on the edge of town there we're going to remove a lot of the uh, roads for right now if you are going to do this and don't want to lose the buildings and make sure you keep your game on pause here while you're doing this so let's go for a very similar process as last time all right i want to have Actually, then again, I bet we can use the BRT road itself, can't we? If we bring you up to line up in the middle, can I actually add a roundabout onto you? We can. We can indeed. We'll go for a medium one in that case then. Um, let's add our roads back in. You're going to come in to here. You're going to do that as well. The BRT road is going to flow out the other side to something of that avail. And we can then reintroduce the two lane couplet system we have here by using our parallel tool to a two meter split. We just take a minute here to just appreciate how great the new road tools really are. Something like this in vanilla CS1 would have been impossible pretty much. And then I want to bring this right up to where it was before, right? And again, you want to make sure those buildings don't go away. Make sure to reintroduce their zoning so they remain happy. Uh, you were apartments, I believe, right? I think you were. <laughs> well, you might be something new now anyway. Let's uh, let you grow up there, I think. Cool. And uh, this is commercial as well, isn't it? Make sure we zone all that back in. Everyone happy? Everyone besides the petrol station. Cool. Well, one abandoned over here anyway, so that's fine. Um, yes, sorry people, <laughs> massive wave of homeless people having their de uh, house demolished for a roundabout road. So this looks pretty gnarly right now, okay? But again, if we go through the process of deleting the roundabout road, it becomes a super node. And we can now maintain the flow of the BRT system. Which is quite gorgeous within itself, isn't it? So I'm going to have to remove my elevated pedestrian walkway here. Now, I will bring this back in in some form, but it's going to have to bend to the whim of the BRT, I think. So let's bring this. Now, again, I can see this is probably going to be another point now to introduce another super node, isn't it? So I'm going to delete these four roads off of here. So this is a really important and quite a big um, road upgrade project today to get this to work and to fit in. So it's all flowing. Yes, don't worry. We will bring your roads back. I know... Deleting roads and existing infrastructure really triggers <laughs> some people, so I can appreciate why it does though. It, uh, it really disturbs the equilibrium, but it will be worth it in the end, I believe. Uh, yes, and then you can just come straight through here. Uh, we'll delete that pathway. And again, this is just a little suburban crossing, so I'm not bothered really about creating a super node here. They're only really to help please these particular areas. So this other super node along the BRT system isn't quite turning out how I wanted it to. <laughs> We're getting uh, the road wear and the road markings actually on the grass. So it would appear there's a limit just to how much you can 
falls through at uh, these junctions, especially when working with the couplet system, which I imagine is probably affecting it quite a bit. So the other alternative here is I've just been kind of playing with how these bus roads kind of behave with the BRT system. And we do have the bus line that runs up to Whiskey Port uh, coming back down this way. And there's also a bus coming through this way as well, isn't there? And if we upgrade the roads here, then we do get what I want, which is that bus paint that blends back into the BRT system. So I think we'll send the buses back up through this way, where there's already uh, existing bus infrastructure. I think that's going to make the most sense, I think. It is annoying though, isn't it, how they don't like cross over here. I feel like this needs to be patched maybe so they're a little bit more kind of intuitive. But I think what we will do is end up actually elevating the um, BRT system over the node, I guess. I think I can really appreciate the little extra layer in height there. We all know how much it goes a long way, doesn't it? But that's not too bad at all. It's also going to free up a lot of the traffic on this road as well. I guess we'll see how it performs. Uh, probably don't want traffic lights on this little spot either. So let's remove some of them where they've appeared. So yeah, now just this bus yeah, actually comes under the BRT. We could do kind of an extravagant bus lane that loops up and over to join this elevated section. But I think we're getting into the realm of kind of over-engineering the infrastructure there, aren't we? But either way, it's also a good opportunity to upgrade some of our zoning as well, because we did actually hit a Great Town Milestone, which does unlock higher density res uh, commercial. So I'd be keen to start sweeping through some of the commercial infrastructure we've got in the downtown to replace it out with high density commercial. And again, we've got some free zoning here, right? This is all going to grow up one day. So let's get some commercial over here as well, and maybe an apartment block also. Uh, of course we did lose our elevated pathways which I might save one block of zone in there for that. I guess we'll wait and see. We're going to be too close toward the elevated BRT now anyway for this to work aren't we? We could also explore putting it above the road but that looks a little silly to me doesn't it? I just don't think you'd see that in real life so we probably won't go for that one. Yeah, I think we'll just reinstate it over the middle because I definitely want to maintain that elevated pedestrian way. Uh, let's do 32 meters by 32 and then come down by half. And then we'll come straight down here. Back down to earth and then that can connect in with that path that initially existed here. And then we can just basically change out exactly where those different crossings uh, happen like that. And are you not going to grow there? I'm guessing there's no commercial lot that size is there uh, which is okay i think we actually might end up removing that apartment building i think the less zoning we've got on these roads the better it's going to be for traffic in the long run so i don't mind just removing a, a, a little bit of them So we can still maintain that elevated crossing and this should just take a lot of pressure off the roads hopefully i guess we'll sort of see uh, how it pans out but again like we did right at the start of the series it's also had some wide sidewalks here as well because uh, that's going to stop people from parking on these streets which we really don't want to happen also again just remove the pedestrian crossings just to discourage them from taking it rather than go over the elevated pedestrian way uh, but either way guys, it does feel like a good spot for a detail in town maps. I want to bring lots of bushes around here. Uh, so maybe some slightly further road configuration as well. We'll sort of see what happens with it. Uh, some bush lining, replace some of the trees that we lost down the middle reservation. Uh, and then also decorate up the interchange. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of office zone in here. Because I think our unemployment has just gone up again a little bit. Uh, due to a massive residential expansion last episode with the town centre. So uh, yes, we got 22% unemployment. That's a little high. 
So we'll get some office and bit of industry placed over here. How are we doing for industry actually? Can we uh, can we even place industry over here? Yeah, the wind direction's blowing that way, isn't it? It's going to blow it right back over the town, which isn't ideal. So maybe just office space in this little area then. Uh, orientate against the highway might be quite nice. But uh, some really nice important road infrastructure upgrades today. But either way, we'll get it detailed and then we'll be right back. Let's have a little uh, scan over Central Whiskey, shall we? And we'll just sort of see what's happened. Uh, so I'm drawing some bus lines here. Uh, this intersection is flowing much better now. We're getting much less traffic build up with this kind of super node configuration. So we'll definitely run a few more of these around different parts of the city, kind of as and when we need them. You could, of course, keep this as the roundabout itself. Of course, roundabouts work absolutely fine. But just to really push the limits of the new road tools today, like with this being vanilla CS2, really cool. I love that this sort of stuff is possible now. So I really enjoy this flow. And then there's also a little bit of office zoning scattered around here now as well. 
Uh, Pathway is getting decent use. You would have noticed as well during our detailing time lapse that we are actually connected in the elevated pathways here so people can cross. We've also got buses stopping on this elevated section as well. Two different lines both stop here. You can see the white and the red bus. And uh, we will have a little look at our public transport information as well. Uh, we've got pretty much 8,000 people using the buses a month, which is... Is that high? I'm not entirely sure. But uh, the Whiskey to Caleb line uh, by the port is the most popular. And uh, then the Whiskey BRT and the West Whiskey Central Whiskey lines are all getting a decent bit of use. So, happy to see them getting use anyway. Um, it'd be really interesting to see how this compares to trams and trains once we eventually get them in. But we're just expanding so slowly at the minute, I just think there's no need for trams, especially in Whiskey. Uh, buses and pathways definitely seem to be doing a job uh, for moving people around. So this is all nice and sweet now anyway. Love that this is possible, having people cross over the uh, elevation here. That's really nice. And we also added in the viewing tower to the water tower as an upgrade, which I didn't know was the thing. Thank you for letting me know about this. I just hadn't even bothered to check if they had an upgrade. So people can come and uh, enjoy the views over whiskey from here now, which is pretty nice. And just where we are over here, uh, really enjoying all the density that's starting to appear. Let's also go check out some of our uh, high density commercial over here now as well. Uh, we've got Nonsense Vintage, which is a new building. Little pathways here, some new props. Little Spuds van, that's very cute, isn't it? We've actually got modelled potatoes down there. And again, with the current bugs, those potatoes could be mistaken for trees, given Cities 2's current, current patch. Right, then we've got some props through here as well that uh, actually work very nicely back onto the tennis courts here, back into more mixed use. So I'm really happy with the way that and central downtown whiskey is developing it's nice to have some high density commercial in here well as well now isn't it and i love that that high density residential hasn't gotten too tall either because i definitely don't want a manhattan style skyline here so the more medium to slightly high rise the better i guess for me and then down the interchange i uh, dropped in oak trees which will look a little nicer once they're fully grown so they look sort of like this uh, drawn in sound barriers up against where we have residential as well just so they're a little bit sheltered even though don't have too many people whinging of noise pollution at all over here. Uh, and then there's a pathway that links into the current existing green belt over this way where people can get back to a little office industrial estate that just sits next to the highway. So uh, yeah, tried to keep the industry zoning smaller. So we got kind of less smokestacks and more storage, but even then it's still just vanilla industry, isn't it? It's not there. the best thing, but the offices over here, we have managed to make a little bit of a dent in that demand. And that we've also brought our uh, unemployment down as well, down to 14% now. Uh, so definitely to satisfy more demands, but we're just expanding so slowly. So the demands and the and analytics and all the demographics are also expanding and sort of reducing a little bit slower as well. But I really enjoy how we built Whiskey up here. Um, I think definitely we'll probably have one more episode rounding out the town here. And then I want to head over here and start doing a mine in town. And we'll definitely kind of turn Edinburgh into more of a wider county and discuss how we can do that. Bringing out these roads and finishing off farm designs and whatnot. And it really just making it a cute little town. I'm thoroughly enjoying building it. But otherwise, guys, it's going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do help the channel to grow. And equally as much, thank you for all support on CS1 still as well. I know you guys are really keen for more CS1 content and we are still winning both our series if you're interested in checking them out as well. And thank you for all supporting the CS2 stuff as well. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Otherwise, please do enjoy some cinematics of the Evolved Whiskey Couplet system today. It's turned out really nicely and seems to be a lot more traffic efficient, at least for the time being. We'll see how long it lasts. Massive shout out to all the patrons helping to support the channel. With a special roll call to Felix Wilkinson. Thank you for everything you do, guys. It always makes these videos possible. But otherwise, please do enjoy those cinematics, but I'll shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. As always, please enjoy the rest of your day.